retardant? Okay, yes. So Colleen was kind enough to um, put together a little presentation and send it along to everybody. I, I trust everybody's had the chance to look at it. Um, it includes a PowerPoint presentation, um, you know, which we'd like to present to the um, governing bodies of the four towns. And uh, there's also a markup of Hopakong's current ordinance with our uh, proposals. So hope, does anybody have any comments or questions? Our aim tonight would be to have everybody look at it and um, bless it uh, if possible on behalf of the Lake Opakong Commission as a whole so that we can uh, have your blessing obviously to go forward and present this to the four towns and see if we can um, make some progress on this uh, issue, which is really a matter of public safety. I, I got some issues with it across the board, quite frankly. Um, and in discussing this with, I just became aware of it over the last, uh, when Colleen sent it out, basically. Um, while I applaud the effort to try to do certain things to make things better, um, you're in an interesting uh, area of the law here in terms of our zoning officer uh, will not be going out onto the lake, first of all. I, I asked if there were any complaints last year. He had zero complaints last year. He said over the years, he's gotten a few complaints. The most he's ever done is written a summons. Uh, he thinks if it was taken to court, they would lose because it's state property. I, I think efforts ought to be, if we're going to really try to change something or do better, I think this has to come as a state law enforced by the state police. Our zoning officer cannot go on to someone's property who's the subject property. They cannot um, uh, see even some of the stuff, particularly if, uh, if an ice eater is in a boathouse, it's underneath the boathouse creating the water. I think the other issue is that you're trying to control a, a method of making a hole in the ice. The issue is that once you make a hole in the ice anywhere, you become subject to the weather, the wind, the underground springs that bring up water, warm water, and basically the state, I would believe, would not want people assuming that anything is safe walking on ice on this lake. It's a dangerous occupation, it's a risky occupation, and efforts to try to make it safer um, doesn't really bode well for people if they have a false sense of security, walking out on ice, not knowing whether it's 10 inches or one inch with a stream, with a spring underneath it. Um, I can go on, I've gotten the letters from uh, former commissioner uh, uh, Tom Foley, uh, and just basically in, uh, saying that Mount Arlington has a 25 foot open water ordinance that has worked very well. In fact, our town has had no complaints regarding the same. The problem is, I believe the problem is education. I, I think it, it would be better spent to educate the public with a, with a uh, effort to say, um, you know, you need any type of device to be on a timer and a thermometer to come on at a certain time frame for a short period of time. Absolutely, you cannot turn them on and walk away. But I've seen every device out there do come up with the same problem. You can start out at one point at 10 feet or 20 feet or 30 feet, and pretty soon you have a, you could have a 100 foot by a 40 foot open body of water. So that's my comments. And uh, I would also invite the mayor if he'd like to say comments at this time. Well, since Dan's not able to respond, let me, uh, I wish those pictures were available. Um, I, oh, I can share my screen. I have it queued up so that you can. Well, it, anyway, sure. If, uh, it's, it's uh, the, the reason you're not getting more complaints is people who use the ice have kind of given up. Um, the, the situation is is worsening all the time <clears throat> as far as as uh, getting rid of the ice um, and and kind of ruining recreation winter recreation on the lake um, and uh, uh, it's it turns out that these propeller driven machines commonly known as ice eaters uh, that I wanted to show this picture if you can hold it a moment 
That was two years ago on a, on a Sunday. Uh, there was about 20 ice boats racing on the lake. Most of them came from, uh, about a third of them were locals and the rest came from South Jersey. There's two very active ice boat clubs there. And it just illustrates uh, the, the, uh, the amount of recreational activities that can be done on the lake if, if the ice is intact. And uh, this supports local businesses. And, and as a matter of fact, that year, we almost were able to run the Eastern uh, Ice Boating Championships on Lake Apacon, which would have been uh, very, very special. Can you go to the next slide? That picture was taken later that same day. Uh, that crack that you see, uh, that's my ice boat. It's just been actually destroyed. That's me. Uh, after I caught a runner going through this, uh, this uh, chasm, which wasn't there 20 minutes before, that was caused by uh, 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 wind picking up from an ice eater open area and carrying straight down the middle of the lake. And uh, uh, I wasn't smart enough to get off the lake soon enough that day. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it just it's a good illustration of what's going on. And, and you see some other illustrations. That's in Great Cove. Um, so the, the idea was to limit uh, these uh, propeller driven to things that would not create an extensive area of, of no ice. Uh, in order to make the ice safer, number one, uh, for fishermen who are on the ice all the time uh, for, and for other users of the lake. And uh, that's basically the idea behind it because these, these ice eaters are very easy to install. They are very powerful. Uh, a lot of people leave them, uh, neglect them, go away for the winter, or just leave them on. Uh, and so in, in our regulations that we're proposing, we're proposing that these be registered, that, that ice eaters, first of all, be banned, and they are banned on certain lakes, um, that they be banned in favor of less intrusive uh, ways, and that people uh, need to register their uh, appliances, whatever they're using, make sure they're hooked up uh, electronically, the, uh, properly, or electrically properly, the purpose of registration will be in part to be able to notify them if they're not around, or if they're away for the winter or whatever, that their, uh, that their apparatus is not behaving properly and they need to get someone to adjust or shut it off so, so that they can be reached and notified. Uh, but also to have some uh, control and to try to make the ice better for recreation and safer. That's basically the idea behind this. Okay. Anybody have anything else on ice retardant? Can, can you guys hear me? No, now we can. Now okay, we can. Yeah, I don't know what was going on with my internet, but... I just want to say, I've been using the lake for all my life during the wintertime. And if you look at these pictures, you can clearly see um, large areas of continuous open water. The only reason they're open is because there's several of these propeller-driven devices in series. And the wind gets a hold of them and opens the whole thing up. We did not have these issues when we had old-fashioned bubbler systems. So we're trying to get back to the old way of doing things with bubble systems on timers and on thermostats. And yes, we've tried the public education. For whatever reason, it doesn't seem to work. And I uh, have made the, the, these uh, zoning officer in Opacon aware of this. I've been in there every time with these pictures. A lot of these pictures that you've seen, I've shown to him. So Lake Opacon is an aquatic public park. It's you know for summer and wintertime use. And that wintertime use, as Dr. Steinbaum said, includes ice boating, snowmobiling, ice fishing, skating, and so forth. And what is important here is if you have the lake, let's say it freezes over, and then you have a situation where certain areas open up like this because of these uh, propeller-driven devices, and then we have a flash freeze, and then you have two inches of snow, you're not gonna be able to tell where the ice is six inches thick or eight inches thick as opposed to one inch thick. 
and it was oh boy Austin <laughs> Yeah, so the point he's trying to make has to do with open areas and refreezing, and there's no way to tell that the ice is very thin in that area, and, and that's one of the big dangers. All right. Um, is there any hope, Fred, that we, that we can get the four towns to, to, to adopt ordinances that would be unified, so to speak? Well, I, I think a lot of the uh, winter residents are very unhappy and the, and the winter users of the lake. I mean, if, you, if you look at some old pictures of the lake, there were literally thousands of people on the ice in the winter. They had carnivals, all kinds of celebrations. Sure, the winters were colder. There were cars on the lake in those days. But, uh, you know, in, in, in my lifetime, I've seen a, a terrible decrease in, in activity. And we managed to have a few accidents with drownings every year. And, and uh, so, so uh, we hope to uh, meet with the, with the uh, towns, uh, present to the town councils, and get a uniform uh, plan here that, that really bans these propeller-driven uh, craft. Well, Fred, can I ask, how come they're using these propeller-driven ice eaters instead of the bubbler systems. I'm glad well, you, why do they use them? I'm glad you asked. I, I've been a lakeside resident longer than, than I I've guess. I've been alive. <laughs> since uh, the 1940s. And I used to use uh, uh, the old time bubbler. And uh, they were hard to install. They worked and they, they were better in that they didn't open a wide area. They were effective but they required a pump that in those days was very loud. You could hear it, you know, all the time. It was very annoying. Uh, they, and, and they were a pain to install and remove and they required a lot of maintenance. So when these propeller driven craft came along, and I'm glad you asked that question because I have two of them, okay? That they're very easy to install. You drop them in the lake, you set them up properly minor hook to a to a timer and and a thermostat and i'm here every day so i can keep a close eye on them they're very effective easy to install uh and, but but most people either aren't here all the time or you know i'm retired